Hello and welcome to Chrome Computing. In this video, we'll be looking at how much RAM you need for an Android tablet or an Android phone. If you like, please like below and subscribe to the channel. So let's get straight to it. So if you already own an Android phone or an Android tablet or you're looking to buy a new Android phone or Android tablet, one of the things you're more than likely are concerned about or you don't know how much you need is the RAM. Now obviously that makes sense because the RAM is really important. The RAM is used by the programs that you open or should we say apps if you're using Android, the apps you open and all apps will use a certain amount of RAM to run correctly. The thing is, with phones, I'm using the Android operating system, it's different to how a computer uses RAM. So if you've used a computer before and you understand how RAM works with a computer, don't assume that's also how it works on an Android phone because it isn't, it actually works a little bit different. On a traditional computer, the RAM, say for example, you've got four gigabyte of RAM, the operating, operating system uses about one gigabyte of RAM and then you open up a program and then you open up another program and before you know it, there's not any RAM left for your computer. Now what your computer then does, because there's no RAM left, it actually stores what was going to be stored into the RAM into the storage. So if your computer uses a hard disk with moving parts, you can imagine how slow that would make the computer run. And that's why if you do use a computer and it doesn't have much RAM, you will see how it starts to degrade in performance the more programs you open, because the RAM is being stored in the storage. So Android works differently to that. It doesn't start putting RAM into your storage. And that's a good thing because it means that Android performs quite well. It runs much faster than a computer that is really low on RAM. What it does instead, it actually closes one of the apps that is no longer being used. So if you've got four apps open, for example, and then you open up another app, and that means there's no longer any RAM available for that app, it will close down one of the apps and it's most likely will close the app that you've not used as much. So it wouldn't close the app you've just used, it would close the app you used a few minutes ago that you're no longer using. But that sounds great and in a way it is because it means you don't need to worry about having too much RAM on your mobile phone but there is implications to that as well. So the implications are that it actually makes your, your a tablet or phone, Android phone or tablet, run slower and the reason for that is it's not because there's not enough RAM, because it closes down one of the apps if there's not enough RAM. But what does happen is, say for example you're using Facebook and then you want to go back to using YouTube, if YouTube had to close down because there wasn't enough RAM, it would have to start YouTube again from the beginning. So that will take up extra time. And that's why you will feel, if you've not got much RAM on your Android phone, you will feel that it's much slower than a phone with more RAM. And that isn't the only problem. If you have to continually open programs again because you've run out of RAM, that's taking up more processing power rather than the app just being in the background. If you had enough RAM, for example, and you had Facebook open and there was enough RAM not to close down YouTube, when you switch to YouTube, the processing power to do that switch is gonna be a lot less than the pro processing power needed to run YouTube again from scratch. That means it reduces your battery life. So how much RAM you've got isn't just about you know, how, your, how your phone performs, it actually reduces battery life if you don't have enough RAM. However, that doesn't mean that you need to have loads of RAM, and this is the problem you will see, not as much with Android tablets, but with Android phones. Android phones are much more common than an Android tablet because most people use phones nowadays, everybody uses them, and most people replace them every two years because the battery starts getting a bit slow, you want the latest model, so the competition is really fierce. And this is the problem. What you'll see is that manufacturers, there's a war on tech, and well, how, how do they make a phone more appealing than another phone? Well, one of the ways they do that is just putting more RAM into it. That's fine if the RAM's needed, but do you really need a phone with eight gigabyte of RAM? I would suggest you don't. I would suggest you definitely don't. It's, 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 a, it's a bit of a scam, really. It's just not needed, not at the moment. Maybe in the future if Android apps change and the way the operating system works, but where we are today and where we will be for the next few years, 
you definitely don't need a phone with eight gigabyte of RAM. It would never be used. So let's get back down to planet Earth and look at how much RAM you actually should be looking for when buying a new Android phone. I would say bare minimum is, it depends on what you're gonna be using it for, but I wouldn't go for anything less than three gigabyte of RAM. Three gigabyte of RAM will work fine if you're one of those people who surfs the internet, uses Facebook, uses YouTube, uses Spotify, uses Instagram, that's okay. However, four gigabyte of RAM would be more beneficial. If you play games and you play games on your Android phone and they're quite advanced games, then you may even need more than four gigabyte of RAM. So going for six gigabyte of RAM, if you play a lot of Android games, maybe there's a reason for that. And I think that's fair enough, but going above six gigabyte of RAM, even if you play advanced games, I don't think it's necessary. But for the majority of people who just use their phone, you might play very casual Android games, which don't take up much RAM, that's fine. So for the majority of people, four gigabyte of RAM is more than enough than what you'll need. So do not go out there and when you're looking to buy a new phone, decide, oh, well that phone's got eight gigabyte of RAM, but that other phone that I really like, that's only got four gigabyte of RAM. So that's not gonna perform better than that. That would be true if the apps took a um, a gigabyte each to open but that's not really where we are so you don't really need it if you if you want to buy a phone and you want good value for money do not look at how much ram it's got i don't think that's the main thing that's important the most important thing is the features and the display and whether you like the look of the phone and the amount of storage the storage is going to be more important certainly if you like to download lots of music for example and you like to download lots of movies to, to save your data you're going to do that on your wi-fi at home save your data so you need a lot of storage but for the ram i i, I can say now that if you had an eight gig eight gigabyte ram phone and a four gigabyte ram phone the performance wouldn't be that crazily different so don't go out there and buy a phone with lots of ram thinking that means you're going to get great performance because that simply isn't the case so in summary the only amount of ram you really need for an android phone this is for a casual user is i would say try and go for four gigabyte of ram but if it's only got three gigabyte of ram it's not going to be the end of the world if you're a gamer and you, you really like your android games then yes going for six gigabyte of ram i, I can see the benefits to that as soon as you start going over six gigabyte of ram you you, you really are just throwing away money and it, you just you're just playing into the manufacturer's hands because it's not needed if they want you to buy their phone they need to do more than just give you lots more ram which isn't ever going to be used they need to give you great quality great display good performance in other ways with the processing power for example the actual processor that's used so i hope this video helped if it did please subscribe to the channel and like the video thanks for watching